Revolted by these stark metaphysical alternatives presented by an absolute beginning of the universe, naturalists have been understandably eager to subvert the standard model and restore an eternal universe. In 1948, Fred Hoyle, together with Herman Bondi and Thomas Gold, uh, broached the first alternative to the standard Big Bang Theory, the steady state model of the origin of the universe. According to this theory, the universe is in a state of isotropic cosmic expansion, but as the galaxies recede from one another, new matter is drawn into being ex nihilo in the interstices of space created by the galactic recession. The expansion of the universe in the steady state model can be compared to a rubber sheet with buttons glued to it. As the sheet is uh, stretched and the buttons separate, new buttons come into being in the voids created by the recession of the previously existing buttons. Thus, the condition of the sheet remains constant over time, and no beginning of the process need be posited. If one extrapolates the expansion of the universe back in time, the density of the universe never increases because the matter and energy simply vanish as the galaxies mutually approach. The steady state theory never secured a single piece of experimental verification. Its appeal was purely metaphysical. The discovery of progressively more radio galaxies at ever greater distances undermined the theory by showing that in the past the universe was significantly different than it is today, thus contradicting the notion of a steady state of the universe. Instead, it became increasingly evident that the universe had an evolutionary history. But the decisive refutation of the steady state model came with two discoveries which constituted, in addition to the galactic redshift, the most significant evidence for the Big Bang Theory, namely the cosmogonic nucleosynthesis of the light elements and the microwave background radiation. With respect to the first, although the heavy elements were synthesized in the stellar furnaces, uh, stellar nucleosynthesis could not manufacture the abundant light elements, such as helium and deuterium. These could only have been created in the extreme conditions present in the first moment of the Big Bang. With respect to the second, in 1965, a serendipitous discovery revealed the existence of a cosmic background radiation predicted in 1946 by George Gamow on the basis of the standard model. This radiation, now shifted into the microwave region of the spectrum, consists of photons emitted during a very hot and dense phase of the universe. Uh, in the minds of almost all cosmologists, the cosmic background radiation therefore decisively discredited the steady state theory. <clears throat>